so good evening everybody my name is revati palnyapan and today i'm going to talk about predicting the mobility of tracked forestry machines operating on nordic forest soil so this will be the outline for today i will be going through the background the purpose of this project uh, and the division of the project task and some of the delimitations and uh, some of the common terminologies that are used in this field and uh, and something about the field test data and a comparative study of the tracked and the wheeled forest machines and finally some conclusion in future work uh this project was performed as a masterpiece work at uh, kdh uh, in most of the european countries the the method of timber harvesting is based on the cut to length method which is uh, basically a two machine solution which is the harvester and the forager harvester is a machine that uh, cuts the log cuts the trees into predefined lengths and uh, forager is the one that carries the logs from the forest area to the transport facility and um, these machines they travels widely on the forest soils and hence the development of these machines should be gentler to the ground um uh, until recent times it was based on the trial and error method and it turned out to be expensive due to the changing demands uh modeling the track soil interaction is quite complex and uh, hence uh, the semi empirical models were developed by the waterways experiment station and all this is aimed at preserving the productivity of the soil Uh, the purpose of this project is to contribute to the already existing knowledge in the field of uh, track soil interaction and uh, in this project we study the vehicle performance and then we try to understand the effects on the environment and also make a comparison between the track and wheel vehicles to find out which one of them is much better on soft soil uh this task was divided into two parts the first one was to calculate the ground pressure the performance parameters and uh, also calculate the rut depth for the tracked and wheeled vehicles uh, and and then finally compare the results and the next part was to compare the field test data and the theoretical models to find out how well they match uh these are some of the delimitations in the project uh, this is basically focused on soft soil and the three these three types of soils were chosen because they were found to be in close proximity to the nordic forest soil and uh, this is limited to the use of uh, three types of uh, steel tracks uh, the eco you want the magnum tracks uh, which are basically manufactured by olof sforsh in sweden and uh, the roots that are present in the soil bed are not considered analysis in this project uh, i'm sure that everybody would be familiar with all these terms so i would just anyways go through it quickly uh, rutting is commonly associated with soft soil and uh, they they generally formed due to repeated heavy vehicle passes on the same path and uh, rutting is generally not good because it prevents the, the growth of the plants and uh, a soil compaction is nothing but the physical degradation of the soil and it uh, reduces the permeability and biological activity and uh, yeah and ground bearing capacity is nothing but the ability of the the soil to carry the maximum pressure that's exerted on it without undergoing shear and yes and uh, i will be briefly talking about the field test data analysis uh, it was performed in a place called tierp in sweden in 2011 and the machine that was used in the field test uh, was komatsu 860.3 and these were the three types of tracks that were used and uh, just the differences between the tracks is that the size of the track uh, shoe and the distance between them is different and this was the soil composition of the test terrain it consisted of peaty soil sand soil and clay soil and uh, the ground pressure was measured by making use of three sensors which were placed at uh, three different depths at 15 30 and 50 cm beneath the ground and uh, the sensors were used to calculate used to find the ground pressure and these were the results that was obtained and uh, one observation is that the maximum pressure was found to be present at a depth of uh, 30 cm and the least was at uh, 50 cm and next was a soil penetration test uh, it was done with the help of a cone penetrometer and it was done on straight and uh, s curved tracks um okay the figure on the left shows the the one for the for the vehicle fitted with eco magnum tracks uh, i've just shown only one of the tracks because uh, all the three tra- tracks they seem to show very similar results 
and we can see that um, the, uh, the soil penetration resistance after the first pass was uh, higher than that of the tenth pass. Ideally, that is not the case because after the tenth pass, the soil would have compacted more and then the penetration resistance should be higher. Uh, one reason why it's not like that in this case could be that uh, the soil would have compacted more and then the crack there would have been some cracking in the compacted soil layer and uh, that would have resulted in a less uh, penetration resistance after the 10th pass. And the figure on the right shows uh, the same for uh, the vehicle which moves on an S-curve. Uh, since there is more shearing on the curved path uh, than compaction, the soil penetration resistance at the curved portions seem to be lesser than the penetration resistance along the straight path. And uh, the rut depth was measured, and this is the result that we got. Um, one observation is that uh, the rut depth increases with the increase in load and the number of passes. And that was all about the field test data. And uh, now I'll just talk a little bit about the comparative study of uh, the tract and the wheeled forest machines. Uh, these were some of the elements that were considered for comparison, uh, the ground pressure, the west mobility models, some of the performance parameters, and rut depth. So uh, there were a lot of models available for calculating the ground pressure uh, for, for wheeled vehicles. And there's, there are not so many for tracked vehicles. So the ones that were common were chosen. Uh, to make the comparison much easier. And uh, we can see that, like, generally, in general, we can see that the ground pressure for the tracked vehicles were much lesser than that uh, for the wheeled one. And uh, moving on to the West Mobility model, uh, the vehicle cone index is nothing but the minimum strength of the soil in the critical layer. And uh, the lower the VCI value, the better it is, because if you can see in this, um, they take, for example, the eco tracks. They have uh, a VCI of say 750, and then the uh, the wheel vehicles have a VCI of uh, say 3000, uh, which indicates that the wheel vehicles can travel only on soils having a strength of 3000 kilopascals, whereas uh, the tracked vehicles can traverse m traverse much better on uh, less strength soils. And uh, moving on to the performance parameters. Uh, so we calculate based on the Becker's pressure sinkage model. And uh, these were three uh, elements, shear displacement, tractive effort, and the drawbar pole. So um, the shear displacement, uh, like if you can see here, this is the point at which the, the vehicle comes in contact with the, the soil, and the displacement is the least there. And, and this is the point where the displacement is maximum, so that is what is uh, seen here. And it's the same for the tires as well. And uh, the tractive force was found to be much higher for the, the tracked vehicles when compared to the wheeled vehicles. And higher the tractive force, the better is the performance of the, the vehicle. And uh, and we can also see that the drawbar, drawbar pull for the, the tracked vehicles are much uh, higher than that for the, the wheeled vehicles, which is also a good thing, which makes the tracked vehicles much better on soft soil. And uh, we can also see that the drawbar pull, it decreases with increase in slip. So moving on to the rut depth analysis, uh, three types of models were chosen. One is a Willoughby and Turnage model, and then the next one is a single pass rut depth models, and then multi-pass rut depth models. So uh, the Willoughby and Turnage model, like if you can see the dotted lines, they, they represent the ones that was um, measured during the field test data and uh, field test analysis. And the, the solid lines, they represent the ones that were predicted using uh, this um, model. And we can see that they seem to be, they seem to follow the, the path, but uh, they're much better for the Okay, and this is for the wheel vehicles. They they don't really seem to uh, match well. And uh, there are a lot of models available for uh, calculating the single pass rut depth. And uh, this has been compared with the the test data. And we can see that they don't really match well because these models were developed for a specific type of soil and a specific type of machine. Um, so this is 
during a straight loaded condition and this these are the results for the straight unloaded conditions and this is along the S curved path for uh, a loaded condition and it's just basically to show that the test data they don't really match well with the models so uh, so the coefficients were found out by the coefficients to suit this type of uh, soil and this type of machine was found out by uh, making a nonlinear regression analysis. So this was performed. I've just shown only one model, and this was performed for all the other models as well. And uh, the multipass strut depth models it was uh, based on the after ABB's model, where is n is the sinkage after the nth pass, and uh, is that one is the sinkage after the first pass, and n is the number of passes, and a is the multipass coefficient. According to him, uh, for soft soils, the multipass coefficient should lie within two and three, and it seemed to happen in this case as well. And uh, this shows the figure for uh, number of wheel passes and number of vehicle passes. Yeah, for the for the wheel passes, it seems it doesn't seem to really match well. But uh, whereas for the vehicle passes, it seems to follow the curve. And uh, some of the conclusions. Um, we can see that the ground pressure for the track vehicles is much lesser than that for the tires. And uh, also the, the VCI values for the tracked vehicles are much lesser, which makes them better on soft soil. And uh, we could also find that the thrust force and the, the drawbar pull is higher for the tracked vehicles, which make them, again, much better on soft soil than wheel vehicles. And um, uh, yes, the, the existing models that were, built, that were available for calculating the rut depth didn't really match well, but they didn't deviate so much either, so they could be related to the best models. So some of the future work is that some FEA analysis could be done to see how much the, the track sinks and how the pressure is distributed beneath the tracks, and also some analysis could be done on the position and size of the curves around the tracks. So that's all I have for today. Thank you. Which one are you talking about? Are you talking about the field test data analysis? Yeah, field test. This one? Yeah, I'm talking about how do you define the right depth given that the, the, the profile of the surface mm -hmm. left behind by the tracks may not be smooth. Yes. It was, it was measured at a certain interval. Like, okay. it was measured after each pass and at certain intervals like once like I think it was around two centimeters interval. Yeah. Can you evolve the same path relatively well on the curve? Uh, like I can you be a little more elaborate? Were you able to with the vehicle were you able to follow the same path along the curve? Uh, I wasn't present during the field test data analysis which was done like two years back, so I just used the data from the analysis. So um, I think it should be much. Sorry. Um, can you just like be a little more elaborate because I don't really understand your question.